I'm Dave Kessler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with episode 107 of Ask Dave. Today we explore the rather woolly world of desoldering, that is, the process of removing solder from a circuit board so as to freeze up a component. Multiple reasons can lead to a need to do this, ranging from mistakes in component placement to the need to remove a component that has broken or been damaged. Now, I will be the very first in line to tell you that this is not my strength. So, I asked viewers to send me comments with their favorite desoldering techniques. At the same time, I did some internet exploration. Desoldering presents an exception to the general rule that making things is hard but tearing them apart is easy. In fact, soldering is easy, desoldering is hard, at least for me. I've been building electronics kits dating back to the Heathkit HW16 my parents gave me in 1975 as a college graduation present. I'll admit I learned soldering by doing. <laughs> I didn't know how important it was to tin my iron, so the first half of the solder joints were pretty ugly. About halfway through the kit, the soldering iron finally got tinned by accident and suddenly things were easier. It was definitely learning by doing. And doing without any feedback from a mentor was definitely hard. So, let's take a moment for a quick overview of soldering. Well, pretty much anything can be soldered to anything. The same basic general steps are required. Two parts are put very near to each other, or better yet, wrapped around each other. Apply the soldering iron to the joint, then apply solder to the joint. Note that it helps to have a titch of liquid solder on the tip of the soldering iron to facilitate the heat transfer. The solder will melt and wick into the joint. The heat is then removed and the solder allowed to cool while the joint is held immobile. Properly done, this all happens in less than a second. Naturally, things can go wrong. Too little heat or poor heat transfer can result in a cold or dry joint, the same thing. Usually remelting these helps. If you put too much solder on the joint, an easy temptation, I, I admit, the resulting solder ball could touch other components. Now, although lots of hams solder every day, there's an unseen, unsung hero in all this soldering, and that's the flux. These two pictures show two sizes of solder end on. They look squished a bit because of the knife cut, but note that the core of each is some sort of whitish material. That's not solder. It's flux. There are many types of flux, but in electronics we use rosin flux in the core of our solder. The purpose of the flux is to flow over everything, cleaning it, so the solder can properly adhere to the surfaces. When you see the puff of smoke when soldering, that's actually the flux vapor, not the copper, lead, or tin. However, it's still not nice to breathe in, and a gentle airflow pushing it away from you is a good idea. Okay, that's a super high-level overview of how to solder. Why might we need to desolder? Well, a favorite mistake of mine, judged by its frequency rather than desirability, is putting the wrong part in the wrong holes. To proceed, I must remove the solder sufficiently to remove the part, then get the solder out of the hole so I can insert a new part. If it's a part with leads I can grab onto, I can simply heat one lead at a time while physically pulling on the lead from the other side, then doing the same with the other lead. This usually leaves the hole full of solder, however. If the leads on the new part have enough strength, I can, one at a time, insert the lead while heating the joint and pushing it through. This means using a holding tool of some sort because the part gets hot fast. If that doesn't work, we must proceed to actually desolder the joint. 
Without getting into specialized tools, the basic ways are solder suckers, such as this bulb here, and desoldering braid. Before I go further, I want to point out that solder suckers, such as this bulb, put pressure on the joint. On this little QRX Labs QCX QRP rig that I just finished, solder sucking in a few cases actually ripped the copper trace right off the board. This is not good. And you can see here where I had to run wires on the bottom of the board to replace the traces lift off the board. So anyway, once you have removed a component by heating the joint and then pulling the wire out, you reheat the joint from one side of the board and use the sucker on the other. If you have a sucker with a fine tip, you can use it from the same side as the soldering iron, but I personally never found that to work well for me. Let's talk about another very popular way to remove solder, soldering braid. In theory, proper soldering braid comes already coated in flux. You can certainly find inexpensive braid without flux, like this once commonly available type from the now defunct Radio Shack. I've always tried to use it straight and have had very poor results. Then I read on the internet several days ago about adding flux, and the light went on. As it turns out, I have a small jar of rosin flux that I got when trying to mount some surface mount devices. Mind you, a very small amount of flux goes a very long ways. Not to mention that this stuff stinks and you can get it everywhere if you're not careful. My artist wife gave me a little plastic pallet knife. I spread a modicum of flux on the braid then place the braid over the joint to be desoldered. After cleaning the iron and then wetting it with the tiniest amount of solder, I press the soldering iron to the braid and push it into the joint. Done right, you'll see the solder wick right up into the braid. If doing so still leaves the hole plugged with solder, add a bit of solder back to the joint and repeat with clean, freshly fluxed braid. Very often it will clean out the hole nicely. Note that this is gentler on the circuit board than the big old solder sucker. Pull the braid back from the board at the same time you pull the iron away so the braid doesn't end up soldered to the board. If it does, just reheat. Cut off and discard the braid that's been filled with solder because it can't be used again. When you're all done, Clean the flux off everything. Little alcohol swabs can be helpful. Now, this brings me to a more powerful way to remove solder, and that is with an iron with a built-in suction device. I found that this one from Radio Shack is simply too big across the tip to fit onto a circuit board easily. If you do try one, be sure to tin the tip before use by repeatedly applying solder to the tip, cleaning it off, and repeating until the tip remains tinned. Subscribers Christopher Cox, Tom KE0ABA, and Vitaflow recommended HACO desoldering tools. To mention the HACO FR300 desoldering gun, so I purchased one. They're professional tools and not cheap. I've seen great things in videos, but won't have it tested in time for this video. I'm looking forward to great results. In summary, the biggest breakthrough for me was that of putting some flux on the desoldering braid. What a difference that simple flux makes. That was enough for me to complete my little QRP Labs QCX QRP rig. And many thanks to the several viewers who responded with tips about unsoldering simply and safely. I hope I trigger the imagination of kit builders who are faced with the task of correcting a mistake or inserting a modification. Until we next meet, 73. Next Wednesday, I'll review the QRP Labs QCX 5 watt single band QRP rig. Watch the previous video in the series or the next one. Please subscribe and check out the support page.